Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. All right, so today what I want to do is I want to basically I want to do a rant. I watch a lot of multimeter reviews. I like them. I like watching the reviews. I like looking at the meters and what's new on them. And one of the things I hear a lot is, hey, this meter might not be safe for AC power, or high voltage. I think people refer to AC power as high voltage, but Guys, uh, first of all, I want to say that anything you're testing on the bench, most likely, even if you're doing a, a tube amplifier with, you know, higher voltage, uh, a lot of those power guys don't consider high voltage unless it's over a thousand volts, thousand volts or above. That's high voltage, but but it's all relative, right? But as far as safety goes, of uh, these category ratings meters are rated for. I've, I've done some videos on category ratings, so I'll put links down below for those. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think we, we got a playlist with that. But basically, the quick story in categories, just you know, to get the safety thing, is category one and category two is anything that you plug in the wall to the bench. All this DC low power stuff, this AC power stuff, it's all fairly low energy compared to category three. And especially compared, compared to Category 4, which is really scary stuff. Category 3, if you saw my hot tub video, that's Category 3. You're out there on 50 amp breaker, 250 amp breakers, uh, higher voltage. That stuff, there's some serious energy, okay? When you're working in these areas, I think a lot of people that are watching reviews are scared to buy a cheap meter thinking it's not safe to use on their bench or, or whatever to plug, you know, watch, look at AC voltage. And in my humble opinion, I think they are. I think all these meters are, not these, the flukes. You see, I'm trying to show all the flukes that I've acquired and some flukes I've given away or I've sold. So these aren't all the flukes I've owned in my life. I've had, I have a Fluke 87 somewhere and I, was, I thought about buying one of the new ones, but man, that's what kind of brought me to this rant because I wanted to do some reviews and I wanted to show why not to buy a Fluke 87 basically. Fluke 87 has been around for a long time, just like this 70 series. I mean, back in the day here, let's just talk about this meters, safety and all that stuff. Remember these Simpson meters? Maybe some of you guys do. I mean, these things were around forever. It wasn't until what, the 80s or whatever, we got all these where digital meters really kind of took over. But just like analog scopes, digital scopes are, have taken over, right? I kind of held back for a little bit, but then once I started using digital scopes with deep memory, it was a game changer. These analog meters, like the scopes, analog scopes that had the big CRTs, one problem they all had is parallax error. You have to line yourself up with the needle so that the number you see behind the needle is the number you're reading, right? If you're on an angle like this, like this, and also the width of the needle, there's some resolution issues, accuracy issues with these kind of meters. The other thing, look how thick they are, but the batteries up here, the fuses up here, easy to get to, one screw flips open, you have access. You know why? Because if you're like me, back in high school when I was learning electronics, I blew up fuses right and left, sometimes damaged your meter and had to repair the meter. Uh, that was kind of a common thing back in the day. So when Fluke 77s came out and 80, the 70 series and 80 series, uh, man, that was awesome. This 8060, I've had this meter forever. This is an awesome meter. This meter not only is true RMS, but it goes out to 100 kilohertz true RMS. A lot of true RMS meters only go out to one kilohertz. So if you want something that goes past one kilohertz, you have to be mindful and, and look for that. So if I'm doing a review on a meter, I'll, I'll point out the bandwidth. Usually I show you on the frequency, okay? But it's, uh, if you know, most meters are 1K. So you can find these on eBay for 50 bucks. That's an awesome meter, guys. Now, look at the, okay. But look, look at the kickstand. That's kind of a stupid kickstand, right? And this is before they came out with rubber cases. They replaced this 8060, which was the top dog in the day. They replaced, and this was the 8060A. And then they replaced it with the 87, okay? Which I don't have, which I don't have on the bench here, but pointing at the 79. So the 70 series, when they came out and replaced these meters, and that's another thing, they always had series like 8050, 
8060 like this one. I, I forget the, the all the ones in the series of this meter. But I guess the point, you know, something I've realized is I never really put a lot of thought into it before. We're going to hear meters beeping as they turn off. <laughs> but I just feel like Fluke has kind of gouged us in price. And we all, you know, we all basically praise Fluke fluke and we tell everybody to buy fluke and even though we might look at or even consider a cheap meter say yeah just buy the fluke to be safe or you know just make sure you're covered and i used to believe that and up until i did this youtube channel i used to tell people that i'll oh, just buy it go, go buy a fluke whatever you know current clamp or meter but since doing this channel i've realized that there's a lot of good meters and i just feel like you're overpaying when you buy a fluke like not by a little bit by a lot i mean 600 bucks for a multimeter that is nuts okay it's data logging all right so if you are data logging you are connected to the power lines and maybe you're in category three and the 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 higher the category is the closer you are to like say lightning strikes that kind of thing uh you might get a spike and then those MOVs will protect you for that. Well, some people, reviewers, will look at those MOVs on the board and count them and say, hey, look at all the MOVs, but what size are they? Are they physically large? Are they small? How are they placed on the board? It's not just the fact you throw an MOV into your schematic, but you also have to position them correctly. Sometimes I just see them lined up on a board. Sometimes I see them grouped together. When I see them grouped together, I, I feel like, oh, that's they probably placed them better. When they just lined up like that, it's like, uh, they just, they're pro I, I don't know. But, but the thing is, is I don't really care either, honestly, because I've never had a meter die from a spike. And yes, I've used mostly fluke, but I just don't, hear of people having problems and safety i don't know of anybody that's ever been injured by a meter and some of the stuff i've seen on youtube where guys have gone out to uh, blow up a meter they've used these energy sources that are well beyond the category rating so these boneheads that are trying to show how unsafe this meter is it's like dude that is not a real world environment you had this rack built with all this energy built on all these re reservoir caps just specifically to go do a test like this Th these instruments this area the for most of us that are doing this testing we don't have that kind of energy that's why the category ratings that's why category one and two is where most of us are working there's just not a lot of energy category three yes category four for sure but guys, electricians that are working in category three and category four, that's who you know, you're gonna find out in the world working in those areas and they're gonna buy fluke. And mostly just because the rest, you know, the reason most of us think about buying fluke is we think it's a safe meter to buy. But you know what? When you're in a category three, category four, you're definitely using the clamp on, at least I would be. I'm not gonna put the current through my fluke 87 you know, from a motor or something. I'm gonna go clamp on it. And I feel like pretty much any clamp on meter is pretty darn safe. I don't even, you're wearing gloves, you reach in, you clamp on something, you back out. You know, the scariest thing is taking the panel off with your screwdriver and all that stuff. Not so much reaching in with my meter, at least, you know, let me know where I'm going wrong on this idea. But, so, okay guys, I've had this Fluke meter forever, this Fluke 30. Uh, RMS and it wasn't cheap it was cheap com in comparison but then I, I was so happy when I bought this Fluke uh, 33 again a series 33, 32, 31 and the thing with this series that kind of bugs me is it's an incremental thing that you're getting to you spend a lot more money to get another button or two on the display or some features but where's the innovation um, you know, like this Fluke 79, they added a couple more buttons. It wasn't innovative. They just did some of the features they already offered on the 87. They added it to the 79, which, by the way, when the Fluke 70 series came out, it was, I think it was 73, 75, and 77. 
they're RMS meters, not true RMS. So basically they took an average reading and then had some ratio or some factor to, to make it, you know, convert to RMS. I believe that's how they were done, guys. And, and so anyway, uh, the Fluke 79 came out to have a true RMS meter in that series. So you didn't have to spend the money on the 87. But holy cow, these meters are over 300 bucks. That's nuts. I think that's nuts. Another thing is Fluke, you know, from, from back in these days when we had a dial like this, it's like we've kept that in our so this dial we still design with dials right that's that's what you're used to it's kind of like when i did the review on this uh unity this generator here look how small it is why do we have to have these big old form factors uh, it's just because that's what's been done for years but why this guy here that guy up there they're amazing they do more than this guy does and they're small packages. So I guess what I'm getting to is there's multimeters that don't follow that convention anymore. And I'm getting ready to review one, actually. So I guess that's why I'm doing this ramp because I was gonna buy a Fluke 87 so I could do review compared to another multimeter I have, just so I can show the difference and why this one is a better buy than this one. But man, I don't want to spend 400 bucks for your Fluke 87. <laughs> it's just nuts. And another thing, guys, uh, the IP rating, ingress protection rating, there's two numbers. One's for the dust and dirt, air getting in. The other one's for moisture, okay? Well, what flukes have an IP rating? But you can go out and buy, and here, let me move these bags that cost a grundo. If you ever buy these bags, you're nuts, I think. You can buy the no-name brands. There's nothing special about these bags. I got these bags because they came with meters that I bought. But I won't, I won't buy these bags. There's nothing special about them. They're just, they're no better, no worse than the, well, I don't know if they're any worse, but they're no better than any of the cheap Chinese meters come in. So don't go spend what you could buy a multimeter for to buy one of these bags because they're just not worth it in my humble opinion. But that's what I'm kind of complaining about is we kind of beat up meters, but if you want a good IP rating, go buy this Amazon commercial. This Amazon commercial has an IP67. You know what you have to do with the Fluke? When you buy that Fluke 87, you can't buy just a straight 87.5 or whatever it is. You have to buy the, what is it, the Max? The Max is like the industrial Max version, and it has an IP67. Wow. That was awesome. I, I mean, for 400 bucks plus, th they should come with those things. And something else, guys, to add to my rant here, uh, the multimeter leads you get, I thought I had set, s sitting here, but you get TL-75s with the $400 plus meter, okay? That's a $22, okay, Fluke's price, that's a $22 multimeter lead set. If they're... Man, why? Why are they 22 bucks, first of all? And why, with a 400 some dollar meter, are you getting a $22, the lowest end, I think that's the lowest end meter uh, lead set that Fluke sells with their uh, meters. God, all, I, with all these Flukes, I know I have them sitting all over the place, but um, I, anyway, look, see this TL-175? This guy here, I've reviewed this with a, a review not too long ago. This has a twist guard, the silicon leads. Those TL-75s you get with the Fluke 87, they're PVC. There is nothing special about those leads. Um, but it's what most of us have used around the industry forever. All right, well anyway, so the leads you get with a lot of these expensive meters, they're just a fluke hat they bought a company called pomona pomona has i've always really liked their leads you know whatever they sell is really good but the leads you're getting with a lot of these meters are the lowest you know level of lead they sell okay um i always thought the flukes came with pomona leads like their scopes everything it all looked like pomona stuff to me and then i 
realized recently, well, they own Flute Pomona now. I don't know if they owned them back then or how long they've owned them, uh, but, you know, I could tell the quality looked like Pomona. I mean, they just, because I had Pomona stuff, and they just looked almost identical. Now, I would never buy those TL-75s. If I was buying multimeter leads to replace something, I'd buy something nicer, silicon leads or something. But anyway, so the cases are really expensive. The leads you get with them aren't the best. I think with the with this 600R meter, I think you actually do get silicon leads. I mean, holy crap, you should, right? Uh, the 189. So the other thing I, okay, so leads are not the best that they give you at the meter the cases most of the time you have to buy the cases and their cost on them is really high the other thing they do is they have all these um, guys in the series you know which there's incremental differences between them and your and the price to get that next one so i've always bought you know, bought this Fluke 77. Well, I always bought the Fluke 80 series. That's why I can't believe I can't find any of them right now. But the 79.3, which was a true RMS, the new one added two buttons. It's a big deal, right? Uh, but the Fluke 189, and my, I, I think that was one of the, that's my favorite Fluke meter. I like this Fluke 189 a lot. I like, uh, this guy is just too big. And I don't like the power button on the front right there. There's a lot, uh, yeah, this meter is way too expensive. I bought this just so I could show, you know, have it on the channel. And I bought it used and it has a big scratch. And so the price was low because of that scratch. I mean, relatively low. But this 189, I think it's a great meter. Uh, this Fluke 16, of, you know, of course they've changed this one. It's the 116 or 117 now, but that was, I don't know what it was, $150 meter. I mean, that's just a really basic, I think it's a 4,000 count meter. There's nothing special about that meter. Leads come off the bottom. That might bother some people. Now, here, uh, the flute case, this is when it wasn't integrated. Um, but see this one right here? This one right here was actually one of the decent stands they had. It, it was pretty rigid, and it didn't pop out of the thing. Uh, the problem I've had with the Fluke 87s, if I had one here to show you, which I don't want to spend that money with, that's kind of why I'm doing this rant. <laughs> it's like the Fluke 87, the stands on them, they're, well, here, I can show you one. You know what? As a matter of fact, okay, let me tell you, uh, Fluke and Tektronix are both owned by Danaher. So Tektronix stopped making multimeters. I think it was because of the competition to Fluke, I, th I think, I don't know. But see this, uh, you guys might recognize this rubber case. It looks like one that goes on a fluke, which I, I almost think it is one that came off a fluke. But it probably came off one of these DMM 916s, and I have a TX1 in it, and so it doesn't quite fit right. But see in the back, the little stand is missing, and that's because it just has, it's a rubber stand, and it, and it or little kickstand, and it kind of, you know, and actually, this Tektronix, as I'm looking at it, looks like it's designed a little bit better than the Fluke one. But the Fluke ones, if you know, if you guys have one, you know what I'm talking about. They rock around, and they just come out. And sometimes, uh, or they push back behind the meter, and they're kind of a pain in the butt. I don't know why they got rid of doing... Um, okay, here we go. Here's the original rubber holsters. This is a temperature meter, a dual temperature meter which I thought this was really cool back in the day when I got this, but see this stand right here? That's back how what they used to look like, you know? And back in the day when they had this rubber holster in the stand, that thing sat rigid on the bench. And it was real easy to pull this guy out and, you know, add the thing for your belt. I mean, this guy here, and it had the big finger grabs that you could reach in. So this guy, I thought, um, you know, this guy gets out of your way so you can grab that thing and pull it out. That that stand I thought was designed well. Then they integrated the case together, saved the money, right? Uh, they didn't drop the price of these things for sure. But this stand, this was an earlier stand. This one worked great. It has a little flex to it. The problem is, is if they do break, that's more of a problem. 
uh, but the back of the case had a little thing where it clip onto, you know, the attachments they have, which are all really expensive. But you know what? Look at this stand. What's you know what's amazing? It's still on the meter. That's what's cool. A lot of these uh, used to get. Here, let me show you. See this one right here. This is an insulation tester, but it still has a rubber stand. But this is the normal fluke stand I'm talking about. They just fall off after a while. They after taking them out a couple times, you know, when you're changing batteries and that, they just don't stay in anymore. And so I bought this one used. Again, saved a lot of money. That's a $700 insulation tester, guys. That's crazy. But anyway, um, yeah, there's nothing special about this case, you know. And this guy here, like you say, I like this meter. And the stand actually kind of worked well. But look at this. You know what was dumb on this one? Is they just had these, just sitting here on the bench, a little piece of plastic sitting there. But they had these really cheesy, really, like it's hard plastic. And it's just a kind of a ball shaped thing. And when there's, they actually kind of work until, until you do kind of pop them. And then they, they just bust off. So you, you spend all your money on an expensive meter like this. And then you have these stupid stands that are just made cheap, guys. They're just... And then what they did is, the reason this is a different color is because they had to make it softer so that you could put your leads into it, you know. But still, I like that meter a lot, even though the stand is BS. And on this one, $600 meter, similar kind of thing, hard plastics, not those stupid rubber ones you get on the Fluke 87s. But the thing is, is same thing, it pops off. And I feel like it's going to break pretty soon. And then it's kind of pain the, you know. But if you're careful and you treat this $600 meter very nicely, it's okay. It works. But it is stupid that I don't know what the heck the deal is. And this is hard plastic up here. Um, and then they put the soft rubber on the sides. But guys, I... They have a little flat spot here, right? Because if you notice, a lot of their meters are rounded at the bottom. Uh, it's a look that they want, I guess, but it's not functional, right? But they have a little flat spot, so it, it rocks and it sits steady. But you know, that meter is, is a, that stand is a piece of crap. Uh, these older stands were better stands, but, and I think they're afraid of them breaking off, but you know what, they actually, they actually do work better. They stay on the meter. So it's missing. When Tektronix copied them, well, they shouldn't have copied them because same problem. Missing. Missing. I bought these used, but isn't that something? Here's one that's on it. Let me show you. See this guy right here? See how it bowls? I don't know if you can tell from there, but it bowls up the thing. Now this one's not, this one's better than the Fluke. Uh, this guy is a real thick piece of plastic and these pegs go in here. I can feel that they're in there really tight. So anyway, this is actually, and it has the leads on the side, which you didn't find in Fluke, but at least I don't remember seeing those. But anyway, this one's actually better than the Fluke one, but still, People in labs have a way of, you know, destroying things. Here's another Tektronix. And again, it's like, look, this is the bigger meter, but it's made the same as that smaller meter. This is a big, thick piece of plastic. So it has the same kind of problem the Fluke had, is you got a piece of plastic and then you have the soft rubber, like the case was just too soft. And so what happens is, like the, they actually learn because this one actually stays in, but the fluke ones pop out, okay, and then then they're gone. So in a lab, when I wanted to grab a meter, a lot of times they they're either so destroyed they don't sit right. Now look at this one. Tektronix came out with this TX3, amazing meter. And by the way, from what I understand, the TX3 or the DMM916. That technology went into when Fluke came out to 189 series. Owned by the same company, Danaher. They stopped making these meters. And next thing you know, Fluke came out to 189. And then the 289. 
but I think they took the technology from what I heard from these meters and put them into this meter. So look at the stands. Too bad they didn't borrow the stand design. They should have took the stand design because this is, I think this is one of the best stands. It, this guy rotates in here really, the way it's captured in the holster is really nice has this plastic piece here that when you push in it kind of locks it so it only goes back so far but I left it out because it's kind of hard to pull out but when you pull it up it clicks in to the top here and then it holds this here and the reason why is if you're working on some equipment you can hang that on the top of the equipment that little rubber thing comes out and just kind of hangs there so they have some uh, drawings in the back showing you know how to do all this stuff so the other thing you can do is you can sit here this on the back like this and you can put this like this so if you got a box like that you can hang it over like a door or something and so that'll hold it still so anyway Tektronix was innovative in how they tried to solve this problem with the case I, I don't see any innovation in Fluke I don't see them solving the problem their stands suck they just Another thing is, talking about innovation, um, look at that display, TX, I mean this is, you can see all the segments light up maybe. They had a, that's a big display with uh, the Hertz, you know, dual display plus the bar graph down here plus the function lights down here. I mean, that was just a nice meter. It's too bad they stopped it's too bad Fluke didn't copy this design and put a nice display. Well, they did on the 289, but then you have to spend 600 bucks. So anyway, um, I was going to buy another one of these. or I was actually going to do a review with this meter with um, one that I thought was a better buy for the money. But, of course, the Fluke 336 isn't in the line anymore. It didn't last very long. They had to upgrade to a Fluke 33, another 330 series or something, which I can't tell the difference from this series and that one. I, You know, they keep on changing the series. It's almost like they just want to keep refreshing things. And it's not like, I don't know. Anyway, it kind of drives me nuts. So I decided I'm not, even though it was on sale for over the holidays, I almost bought that Fluke. And... I was looking at the Fluke 87, like I said, and I couldn't decide. And then I just kind of got peeved a little bit and decided to do a rant and just tell you guys, stop saying Fluke is the best and that's the one you should buy. This Klein meter, the CO900, and they have a CO800. The, the CO800 is actually really nice because it has the little thing where you put the probe on here for the third hand. I bought this one just because it was the highest one in the in the range here but this guy here is like i think less than 150 bucks 130 bucks and oh by the way it comes with a case and it comes with nice leads too and you know what else it's etl listed so as far as safety if you're going to work in it was this category three and category four uh i think that's a way better deal than the fluke this guy also has well, anyway i'll do a review on this but i was going to do a review and get the latest fluke to kind of compare them to and I'm I'm not gonna do that I decided I'm not gonna spend that money on that um, I like this little IR thing I got this they were closing these out and I I think I either one instrument they I either won this one or I won this one just by filling out a thing and so I either got this one or this one for free the other one I bought on a closeout. I think I got this one for free and I bought this one on a closeout. I think that's the way it went. And anyway, guys, um, Amp Probe. I've done reviews on this guy. This guy here has two temperature inputs. So it does what this Fluke 52 did, but it's all built into the meter. This guy's a better price than the, the Fluke's AM570. This guy here, I've shown the insides of this guy too. This guy here kicks butt. A flashlight. Fluke won't put a flashlight on a meter because they probably think it, you know, it's hokey. But 
you don't you don't want to rely on the light you don't go into a dark work environment but it, you know if you're working in a furnace area where you have lights they don't put the best lighting in there so you have to also hold a flashlight in your mouth or whatever when you're trying to you know but so what's wrong with adding a flashlight i think that's why not but this guy does a lot of cool stuff and i've done a review on that as a low pass filter so that's a good one for electricians and that's also uh you know, like I say, it's owned by Fluke, Amprobe. Amprobe's been around, I think, even longer than Fluke. I think they made the uh, current clamp meters back in the day when Simpson was making meters. So they've been around for a long time. And Fluke, man, I, I don't know if it's a yellow case or what it was, uh, but they have done a great job, and they've made us all believe that they're the meters to buy. And... I don't think they are. I I think you're overpaying. So here's a review that I wanted to do. And I bought this Fluke 117 even though I didn't want to. Uh, but this 117 compares most closely to this Testo. And this Testo, you know, it's no dial. It's push buttons. So they, they said, well, yeah, we're not going to follow this old dial thing. What usually... I So anyway... Uh, I'll, I'll do a review on this, but, and you know what? TL75 leads. So, little cheap $22 leads on these. So, that's what you get. Which, by the way, when you buy a Fleur for a lot less money than you buy these Flukes, uh, this guy comes with nice, really nice test leads. And not only that, guys, look at this. It comes with a magnet. Oh! Let's look at the stand on this guy. It's kind of a soft case out here, but then it's hard. It's a hard case right here where the stand sits. So this, and this is kind of a hard plastic. So this stand works really well. It works like a stand. And then the outer case is rubber where you can put your leads in here, but it also has this nice magnet. And this magnet's a strong magnet. And this is a third party tested too. So. I, I suggest looking at a FLIR before you spend your money and buy a Fluke 289 or some expensive Fluke. So, anyway, there's my ramp. We got to stop praising Fluke for charging us an arm and leg for, and I know you guys say, but it's because they're safe. Really? Why are they any safer than this meter that costs a lot less? Or. Like we said, amp, you know, amp probes owned by Fluke now, and why are they any safer than this meter? And look at the stand on this one, by the way. This one's kind of got a hinge, and it's hard plastic here, soft around the sides, and it's kind of a, you know, flexible plastic thing here with these rubberized kind of feet at the bottom. It has a little spot down here, so this guy sits on a bench really nicely. And that guy's far less money, or these current probes. Why not buy a Klein instead of one of those expensive things? You get a bag, you get nicer leads, you know, you get more functions, you get more for your money. So, next time someone comes and asks you what meter they should buy, maybe there's some other options besides Fluke. There you go. All right, guys, have a good day. We'll see you next video. <laughs> ay, ay, ay.